Marina Perkis is a political commentator and podcaster famous for her anti-Brexit and anti-Tory views. So when she went head-to-head with Jacob Rees-Mogg on GB News, it was always going to be a fiery one. And it didn't disappoint. The the head-to-head has already been viewed millions of times on social media. Let's take a look. As I understand it, Marina, you don't think the cultural wars really exist? Do you think they're essentially a a right-wing... Oh, no, I um, I think they exist because... People like you and your party in government, they desperately need them to exist because what else are you going to win the next election on? So um, they're not coming from people who want to pull roads down or want to edit Raoul Dahl. Isn't Mm. there a battle of ideas that is going on that sometimes get expressed in extreme form? So what I think has happened is it's a distraction technique. So don't get me wrong, I think any calls to rewrite Roald Dahl, for example, or to rename a a street. By the way, the street renaming, if we go into that, it was called Black Boy Lane. You know, that was why they renamed the street. I think that's fair enough. If you had a street named, you know, White Trash, you might want to rename it. But I think what's happening here is you're drawing attention to these things that actually don't impact people's lives. And the reason you're doing that is because otherwise people might just focus on the real grievances in their life, which are basically caused by your government. But doesn't no platforming actually affect people's lives? Because freedom of speech is absolutely essential for the no. political discussion that we're going Jacob, to have. Jacob, do you know what really impacts people's lives? And I really would just ask your viewers just to, you probably dislike me if you know who I am, but just ask you, your viewers to think about what really impacts their life. Is it Roald Dahl being rewritten? Which, by the way, I don't think it should be. Is it the renaming of a street? Is it, I don't know, some woke policy? Is that really what's harming people? Or is it the concern that they are going to be waiting for an ambulance and dying? Is it the concern that their children are getting a poor education? Is it the concern that we've got the highest energy bill on the planet? It's so telling how often, I've been on GB News a few times recently, how often these stories about Roald Dahl come up. Like, you, you have literally someone who was a Tory minister for a long period of time, right, until Liz Truss had the most catastrophic end to a premiership in modern history, right? Someone who's in government, who's had the levers of the state at his hands, who was also, you know, pushing forward probably the biggest change to our political economy in the last 30 years, which was leaving the EU. And all he's talking about is Roald Dahl. Like, it's so irrelevant. And I thought Marina Perk has put very well that this does not matter, right? I don't even think GB News viewers particularly think that matters. I think GB News viewers probably do care much more about how long it takes for an ambulance to arrive, but the host on GB News, especially people such as Jacob Bruce Moggs, who are Tory MPs, right? They don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about Roald Dahl. So very well put. Let's look at what happened next in that debate. But isn't this why you should stand up for freedom of speech? Because no. if you attack freedom of speech in some areas, Jacob. you're then putting the government in control Jacob, of Mr. the agenda. Mr. You're freedom. deciding Mr. politicians freedom should. Mr. Freedom of Speech here, did you or did you not vote to stop people protesting if it was annoying? Well, there are limits on protest, but, oh, okay. but, but, but so public free protest So free speech, so long is, as I'm okay with it. No, public protest is a very important part of freedom of speech, and the laws that have been introduced mm-hmm. are, are to get the balance right between people okay. going about their daily you lives. Me, That's perfectly you reasonable. You tell me how freedom of speech is going to make people's lives better in this country after it's been decimated by things because, like your Brexit. Because it's really important, because it allows you to come on this programme and make your case. Uh, uh, and this that once ma- you... Sorry, me making my case on this programme, yes, which I'll, never, which I'll never come back on, okay. is, is just so that people understand that this is not going to help them. Freedom of speech is not going to help you pay your bills. It's not going to put food on the table. It's not going to feed your kids. But it allows you to make the argument that you're making. Doesn't matter. Doesn't but that's matter. that's so fundamentally All important. I'm here to do is to draw attention to the fact that this, what you do... Is, yes, is, but that it, is freedom it, of speech. It's so it's, it's really just, important to defend... People. Marina Perkins didn't need to concede there that freedom of speech doesn't matter. Of course, freedom of speech matters, but it doesn't particularly matter whether or not a company decides to re-edit Roald Dahl to speak to a modern audience, right? But, I mean, you know, let, let's not split hairs here. Generally, the point was made very well. The interview went on for a while. They talked a lot about Brexit and inflation. Marina Perkis was right to point out we have higher overall inflation than the rest of Europe. Then Jacob Rees-Mogg was correct that Germany has higher food price inflation than we do. It was a real back and forth. You can watch it online. The end, though, of the debate was pretty funny. So Marina Perkis brings up an article Rees-Mogg wrote with David Frost. In this article, article, you talked about how anti-woke policies are going to uh, help recover the country. White is recovering, right? Your your guess is as good as mine. Now, how are your anti-woke policies going to 
help restore the economy, for example? Explain it. Explain well, it, we please. want supply-side reform. We want the economy to get to higher levels of growth. And this how is your really, anti-woke This policies is really important. Do we don't want people distracted please explain by it. all We've the wokeness. We've got only a small amount of time. Well, as we were discussing earlier, the £140,000, small amount of money in itself, being wasted by the Cabinet Office. That's part of the point. Yeah, but Sorry, that is simply, and we're talking about fixing the economy, that, and you've just quoted no, 140,000 pounds. I'm talking about things that are symptomatic pounds. of the problems okay. of the I, waste within the government. Can I just, again, can I explain to your viewers, the government. When, when Jacob talks about uh, deregulation, that's a big thing, you're all about deregulation, what Jacob is talking about is scaling back your workers' rights and consumer I'm rights. I'm afraid so, we're going to have to draw this to a conclusion, oh, but you're shame. wrong on that, because oh, our really? employment that's... rights all predate the European this Union, didn't even want by wage. and large. In 2011, uh, but unfortunately, we've got to go straight to the weather. We've overrun. But the sun will no doubt be shining in Somerset, um, and it'll be a special, Don't nice weather, sun, weather there. Please. But o over, over to the weather, and thank you so much uh, to my guest for joining me this evening. It was a very chaotic ending. I quite liked her sort of pretending to be the host instead of <laughs> Jacob rees -Mogg. I love that at one point, Jacob rees -Mogg was like, we, the reason we talk about wokeness all the time is because we don't want people to be distracted by wokeness. It's like, well, then why don't you just shut up for once in your life and stop going on about this? But I think what really came through in that segment was like the complete flimsiness of the idea of freedom of speech as it exists in the mind of someone like Jacob rees -Mogg, because. To him, it's like, well, freedom of speech is the fact that I allow you to come onto this platform, which has unimaginable amounts of money being pumped into it to spend hours and hours priming the audience to view you in a particular way, to view your arguments in a particular way. I'm going to give you like nine minutes on that to come in in that context and, you know, express your little opinion without arresting you or without, you know, de denying your ability to be here. That That is this concept of freedom of speech. There's no complex understanding of like what it means for the media in this country to be owned by so few people. What does it mean for the platforms that we have for so-called speech to be exercised, to be curated and cultivated in such a way? You know, ideas of freedom of speech mean nothing when you don't take into account the question of media platforms and ownership of those media platforms and how that impacts those platforms and how they how it shapes the speech that can take place on it. Uh, and also, it's this very individual idea of freedom of speech and this idea of speech as something that is completely divorced from power. So, like, first of all, collective forms of expression, for example, unionization, protest, etc., campaigning, these are not recognized by someone like Jacob Rees-Mogg as a legitimate form of freedom of expression because it's collective and it's not just about speech, but it's about actually translating speech into power. So there's this idea of, we'll allow you to talk all you like, but the minute that talk translates into a form of either collective action or reclamation of power, or, you know, assertion of power, that's when we're going to make sure that you are cut off, that you're criminalized, whatever. And that's what obviously the Conservative Party is doing with their anti-union legislation and with the uh, public order bills. It exposed that, you know, culture warmongers like Jacob Rees-Mogg, the people who like to talk about freedom of speech, conceptualize freedom of speech in the most narrow and anemic ways because that's what suits their agenda, because they want people to talk and talk, but they don't want anyone other than themselves to actually have power or ownership in this country. That's where they cut it off.